Hey, today is a video I am super excited about. I'm talking about vintage Dax shoes. Um, if you are a Canadian watching these menswear videos, I'm sure you're familiar with Dax. If you're not Canadian and you're into vintage shoes, definitely a, a brand or a company that you're going to want to add to your eBay searches. Really uh, high quality shoes. You can find them at great prices right now. Something uh, that you're going to be super happy with. And I'm going to touch on it later on in the video, but also some really cool leather options uh, that you can, you can find uh, that are also going to be very, very unique. Most of the pictures and videos are going to be of my two pairs that I have. I've got these black apron toes in oxhide leather uh, and these brown long wings in bison leather. Uh, I'll try to put some other uh, pictures in as well, just uh, from online that I can find because there are just so many great pairs out there, really cool options. Um, and just also of note, the company is back in operation now, being made in England. I believe it's just an online sales only. Um, but I am talking about the pre-bankruptcy uh, vintage Dax shoes here. You know, the ones, the ones that a lot of our dads wore or, uh, you know, our friends' dads. Uh, so definitely looking at uh, some of the old, the old school Dax today. Matthew Dack founded the shoe company in Toronto in 1834. So, uh, I mean, we're talking pre-Confederation. This is way back. And uh, actually, now that I am looking at the date, I believe at that time it would have still been the Dominion of York. Um, I could be wrong. Somebody uh, correct me or confirm what, what I'm saying here. Um, but we're looking way back at 1834. And unfortunately, Matthew Dack died not long after that. And operation of the company was taken over by his son Edward but right from the beginning uh, the focus was really on style elegance having high quality footwear uh, that was kind of targeting those customers that wanted high-end items and had the the funds and the means to afford them it was a single shop in Toronto that had a factory in the back and it stayed that way for a long time I think for almost 80 years uh, and after the First World War, that's when they started to expand uh, and have stores across the country, still maintaining the factory and uh, production in Toronto, but then selling across the country. And uh, from First World War to the Second World War, really continued to expand. Many more shops uh, found across the country. But then in 1948, they were bought out by the Marston Corporation. And that is when production moved to Fredericton, uh, New Brunswick, and that has some importance uh, as well. Uh, and then they were bought out again in 1960 by famous English shoemakers, Church & Co. So uh, definitely um, an interesting history to the company and, and being bought out by Church & Co. also leads into some, um, their Made in England line of footwear, which, uh, which helped in later years. And, and I'll get into that a little bit as well. From what I've read, the Fredericton plant didn't have the capability of making rubber soles and heels. And this was significant because through the 80s and 90s, uh, products that had those rubber soles uh, were becoming increasingly more popular and people weren't as interested in footwear with leather soles like Dax. Um, now, since they were owned by churches, they're made in England line did continue selling through some of those declining periods, um, but not enough to save them. Unfortunately, in the end, they uh, had to claim bankruptcy in, in 2009, um, but there are still many pairs around, as mentioned, if you're out thrifting that uh, you know have stood the test of time. And uh, even though the popularity of that type of footwear declined through those 80s, 90s and aughts, and now we're starting to see a resurgence. There are a lot that are in still in great condition and then a lot that uh, you know just need to be taken into a cobbler for some simple repairs and, and they're up and running again. Aside from being known for quality, they were also known for using some just and some wildly exotic, uh, pun intended, some wildly exotic leathers. They used seal elephant uh, you know these two pairs that I've got here oxide and bison would be some of the more common leathers that they use um, but they use so many rarities like reindeer antelope crocodile alligator camel was one of their really popular leathers they're highly sought after there are camel long wings out there if you ever come across a pair of those those are highly sought after shoes uh, just really well made and a very unique leather that uh, has become uh, really popular 
Um, Kangaroo is another leather which they used and I'm seeing a resurgence in that uh, with some companies just because of the tensile properties of Kangaroo. They used ostrich uh, and then uh, they use lizard, shark. Um, I think I had mentioned seal. And one really neat story that I had read in a forum, there was, there's a guy in one of the forums, uh, I think his handle is actually Daxman, but he was a manager at one of the stores and they had made a one-off pair for a customer in white rhinoceros leather. So just some outrageous options that they had, but it almost seems like if it wasn't human, they'd make a shoe out of it. Um, so, and these are, these are really exotic leathers, high-end footwear, some of these were pretty pricey. Um, I think he had said those rhinoceros shoes at the time, which would have been, I think, 70s, 80s, was like 850 bucks. So we're talking about some expensive footwear when you get into some of those really luxurious options uh, that people could have. So that's just a, a brief history on the Dax shoe company. I absolutely love finding these. They're just such high quality and you can find these at such great prices. Uh, and it's also just kind of a neat part of Canadian manufacturing history and just um, tells a bit of the story of, of footwear over the centuries and how certain things were popular in certain times. And then, you know, like with through the 80s and 90s, people weren't interested in the, you know, leather outsoles. And then now you're starting to see a resurgence in that because people can see just how well they last and how they do stand the test of times. So if you're in Canada, hit up a thrift store. Uh, maybe you'll get lucky, find yourself a pair of DAX or hit up your eBay searches. And if you've got some DAX, honestly, I would love to hear what you've got. It's a very interesting topic for me. Um, really a company that I love and love to hear about all the, the wild pairs that people have, or even just if, if it's a standard calf skin, um, Derby. Those, those are just incredibly well made as well. So we'd love to hear what you've got and thank you so much for checking out the video. Mm -hmm.